Well, hello, You Can Heal family. My name is Sheena. Thank you for listening to the Bible reading today that we're getting ready to have. And today's a wonderful day because we are reading our foundational scripture, Psalm 42, verse 1 today. So if you've been listening to me at all, we gulp for God on this channel, meaning we hunger and thirst after the Lord. So we've made it to Psalm 42 verse one and I just realized that and I got really excited to see that so why don't we go ahead and get started as the deer pants for streams of water so I long for you O God I thirst for God the living God when can I come and stand before him day and night I have only tears for food while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks. It was the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And that's so true. When we're, when we're sad about something or discouraged, we've got to just put our hope in God. That, that's the answer. I'll put my hope in God and I'll, I will praise him. Right? So we'll open our mouth and we'll thank him and we'll, we'll praise him and worship him and speak his name and all the marvelous things he's done. I love that. It goes on to say, now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember your kindness from Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mazar. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. Through each day, the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. O oh God, my rock, I cry, why have you forsaken me? Why must I wander in darkness, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts pierce me like a fatal wound. They scoff, where is this God of yours? Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. So that's so good. When we're feeling discouraged and sad, Put your hope in God and praise God and remember his kindness from the past. Remembering things he's done for you in the past, you know, will help us perhaps not feel so down. Like if God came through for me before, he'll do it again. He always does. But remember his timing is such a perfect timing and we have to be patient and keep waiting, keep serving the Lord and and um, spending time with him. And, and you'll see how he'll come through. He, he never fails. He can't fail. He's God, right? So it goes on. Let's look at Psalm 43. It's a little short psalm. It says, I will put my hope in God. Oh God, take up my cause. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in darkness, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. <clears throat> Excuse me. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> go to God, the source of all your joy. That's so beautiful. He is the source, right? He's the one that when we're feeling low and depleted, like right now I'm back at the, the college preparing for the production tomorrow of Beauty and the Beast. And I'm just in my car and I really want to take a nap, but I'm kind of afraid to like fall asleep in this car. <laughs> I think that'd be kind of weird, but you know, God's our source of strength. He's our 
he's our source like we just read in psalm 41 he's that refreshing water that we need like when we're feeling down and low like let's go to god the word of god to fill us up he's our source he's the source of all my joy i will praise you with my harp oh god my god why am i discouraged why so sad again here we go i will put my hope in god so instead of being sad put your hope back in god the bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick i think it's a proverb and it's so true when you lose hope you just it, it's kind of like depression will sink in right you gotta have something to hope for and then it says i will praise him again my savior and my god so continue to put your hope in god and to praise him always uh, let's keep going let's look at psalm 44 together this one is entitled prayer for deliverance by god and if you're new again we are reading the open bible the new living translation um, this says a psalm of descendants of korah oh god we have heard it with our own ears our ancestors have told us of all you did in other days and days long ago you drove out the pagan nations and gave all the land to our ancestors. You crushed their enemies, setting our ancestors free. They did not conquer the land with their swords. It was not their own strength that gave them victory. It was by your mighty power that they succeeded. It was because you favored them and smiled on them. You are my king and my God. You command victories for your people. Only by your power can we push back our enemies. Only in your name can we trample our foes. I do not trust my bow. I do not, that is, does not say bow, that says bow. I do not trust my bow. I do not count on my sword to save me. It is you who gives us victory over our enemies. Now just think about that. We're not walking around with a bow and a sword, right, to save us from our trouble. But sometimes we try to use our own strength, our own words, you know, our own way of getting back at people to protect us and to save us. But it's only God who can give the victory over enemies. You know, there's nothing we can do, really, if, if we really want to just stay in his, like, oh, what am I trying to say? If we just want to stay in God's will, sometimes things will happen and you just want to get back at someone but no god always gets the victory if we just wait and let him take care of things and deal deal with people on our behalf the, the second part of verse 7 says it is you who humbles those who hate us oh god we give glory to you all day long and constantly praise your name but now you have tossed us aside in dishonor you no longer lead our armies to battle you make us retreat from our enemies and allow them to plunder our land. You have treated us like sheep waiting to be slaughtered. You have scattered us among the nations. You sold us, your precious people, for penance. You valued us as nothing at all. What is going on here? I'm looking down at the commentary section, but there is nothing for those verses. So it goes on in verse 13 to say, You have caused all our neighbors to mock us, who are an object of scorn and derision to the nations around us. You have made us the butt of their jokes. We are scorned by the whole world. We can't escape the constant humiliation. Shame is written across our faces. All we hear are the taunts of our mockers. All we see are our vengeful enemies. All this has happened despite our loyalty to you. We have not violated your covenant. Our hearts have not deserted you. We have not strayed from your path, yet you have crushed us in the desert. You have covered us with darkness and death. If we had turned away from worshiping our God or spread our hands in prayer to foreign gods, could we surely have known it? For he knows the secret of every heart. Oh, wow. He knows the secret of every heart. That just stood out to me. That was verse 21, you guys, and we're in Psalm 44. But just think about that, and I don't want to be just pulling those words out, but actually I am, because I'm thinking sometimes we have things in our heart, 
that are there for a long time and we don't tell anybody and we hurt but God knows that nothing is a secret from him we can talk to him and share what's going on we really we really can it says for your sake we are killed every day we are being slaughtered like sheep wake up O oh Lord why do you sleep get up do not reject us forever why do you look the other way why do you ignore our sufferings and oppression we collapse in the dust, lying face down in the dirt. Rise up, come and help us. Save us because of your unfailing love. <clears throat> so it looks like the descendants of Korah are feeling like God isn't there for them. So they're asking him, where are you? But, you know, when God's silent, there's he's still working. If we look at that practically, sometimes it could feel like you're praying, like, God, you're not doing anything. You're not moving in my life. You're not helping me. You're not hearing me. You're not listening to me. But God knows everything that's going on, and he's working. Even when we don't know he's working things out, he is. And he does deliver. He, he's just good, and he's just faithful. And, and that last verse, the last part of that verse says, save us because of your unfailing love. Like, right there sums it up. He can't fail. His love for you is, it just goes on and on and on. And he wants the best for you, for us. So that's, let's stop there. That was Psalm 44. And just hold on to that. God's unfailing love. It just, he is love, remember? So he can't fail because that's what God is. He's love. He's love and we're to be like him. And just remember. Uh, just take your deep breath and remember God loves you. Even if you don't think he does, he does. He can't lie. He can't lie. He can't lie. And God, God is love. Amen. Thanks for listening. Glad you joined me today to hear the scriptures. Stay about that life, right? Trying to get gain understanding and knowledge so we can have wisdom and apply the word of God to our everyday life. Because that's where it's at. And always continue to listen to Holy Spirit. I was thinking of saying true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Amen. So we're going to change that up a little bit for those of you who've been listening for a while. Let that Holy Spirit, let Holy Spirit guide you and lead you into all truth today and forevermore. We'll talk soon. Bye for now.